going in. Hopefully the lighting is better than the old apartment. Hey y'all and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. For today's video, we're making ramen. Well, sort of. I'm meal prepping today so I won't be cooking the noodles and I won't be cooking some of the vegetables because I'll want those to be cooked fresh when I serve the ramen. But I will be making the broth and prepping all of the vegetables so it's quick and easy when I throw it together for dinner. I thought we could hang out together while I meal prep for the week. I'm kind of making this recipe up as I go. I kind of made it up and wrote a recipe down earlier today. So I will have the full recipe linked down below with amounts that I actually end up using. But I am, like I said, kind of making it up as I go. I know all the ingredients I want to use and how I want to make it, but exact amounts, not sure on yet check down below for exact amounts. So for this recipe today, you're gonna need ramen noodles, of course, although I'm not going to be cooking these right now. I'm gonna be cooking them right before I serve. So I'm gonna put these away. For my broth, I'm gonna use an onion, garlic, ginger, some vegetable broth. I'm gonna be using not beef broth, so it's a vegan, vegan broth that's flavored like beef broth, but you can use any kind of vegetable broth. I'm going to use some mushrooms, some white miso, soy sauce, and dried seaweed. And then I'll just be chopping up the rest of the vegetables and I'll show y'all how, or I'll tell y'all a little bit how I'm going to cook them and that will all be down below. So the optional toppings for today is tofu. This box tofu is the only tofu I can find at the store right now, which it's totally fine. I still like this tofu, but it is silken, so it's, a, even though it's a fir, extra firm tofu, it's softer than what you would be used to as a firm tofu but I think it'll do really well in the ramen for that like it's that like silken but firm texture you get in like miso soup we're gonna air fry this for the rest of my toppings I'm going to do roasted corn roasted carrots air fried Brussels sprouts steamed bok choy sliced green onions and bamboo shoots and then as a garnish on top, I'll also be using a little bit of broccoli sprouts and pickled radishes. I'll make sure I have the recipe for the pickled radishes linked down below as well. So let's get right into it. While that's heating up, we'll cut up our broth mushroom. So I just have a nice bundle of mixed mushrooms here. You can use shiitakes if you can't get a mixed mushroom bundle like this. I'm going to put the miso back in the fridge because I'm not going to need it until the very end of making the broth. getting the broth going, I'm going to go ahead and get the tofu in the air fryer. Now because I am meal prepping this to eat later, I'm going to air fry the tofu now and then heat it up in the oven or the toaster oven so that the process is much quicker. If you've never tried this box tofu that does not need to be refrigerated, 
You can find it usually around the Asian food, around where you would find the seaweed. And I love that this tofu doesn't have to be refrigerated, so I usually always have some on hand. Although this was the only box of extra firm that I could find at the grocery store this week. But there's a better chance of finding this tofu than finding cold tofu right now. So I will take what I can get. And this isn't really packaged with any water. There's a little bit of water that'll come out, but I don't have to worry about draining it. It's like a broken half there. Ugh. This one broke. Broke up. Oh well, we're gonna have to work with it. So like I said, this is a firm tofu, but it is silken, so it's it easily falls apart. So I am just gonna cut it up into large strips. You could cut it into slabs like this, or strips, or cubes, however you prefer. You can smell the ginger and the garlic. It's almost time to add the mushrooms and some of the other ingredients. All right, I'm gonna throw in my mushrooms. Let those cook down just for a minute. Okay, and we're gonna put this in the air fryer until it starts to get golden brown. When the mushrooms start to release their juices and stick to the bottom of the pan, we're gonna deglaze it with just a splash of soy sauce. We're also going to add our not beef broccoli cubes to the pot. And lastly, before we bring it back up to a simmer, I'm going to add my seaweed. Bring the broth up to a boil and then down to a simmer 
and let it simmer for at least an hour. While that's working, I'm gonna cut and prep all of the veggies that I'm going to put in this ramen. For the Brussels sprouts, I'm just gonna cut the bottom off and cut them in half. So one thing I wanted to talk to y'all a little bit about while we're in here hanging out is how the food we eat affects our mood. I understand that it's a very stressful time and I myself have had a couple of panic attacks early on when, when all the information was coming out about this virus. I know that a lot of people cope in different ways, but some of those ways can be harmful, such as eating your feelings. I see a lot of people talking about gaining weight during quarantine, but it doesn't have to be like that. I see this at the store the items that the grocery stores are running out of, and it's not fresh produce. It's not healthy whole foods. It's foods that are actually contributing to our negative mental state. A lot of people don't know that the food they eat directly affects their mood. You are what you eat, right? Well, if you eat processed garbage, how do you think you're going to feel? Like garbage. And I'm not trying to point fingers at anyone. Like I said, I know we're all coping in our own ways. But we should be treating our bodies with the utmost respect, especially during a hard time. We should be giving it even more love. At this time when we're all stuck at home, we could be cooking healthy meals and exercising a little bit more. You don't have to take the time to drive to the gym. You don't have to take the time to drive to work. You can put that time towards taking care of ourselves. As an anecdote, I'll tell my story of going from a super negative, unhealthy mindset, depression, anxiety, to where I am now. I'm not saying I don't still struggle with anxiety. Depression, not so much. Definitely anxiety. But I can cope with it now. It's nowhere near as bad as it used to be. I grew up eating the standard American diet. The sad diet, as they say. It's not that we ate fast food super often. We didn't. But we ate food that was boxed and processed all the time. I used to eat TV dinners and then try to go to gymnastics practice and wonder why I was always so tired and why I couldn't keep up with the rest of the kids. At that time, I didn't know any better. I was just a kid. Fast forward to high school, my sleeping pattern is terrible. My eating pattern is terrible. I'm working out a whole bunch because I danced and then I would go to the gym after dance. Yeah, that's right. Because I was on the dance team, we our last period of the day was dance. That means we had an entire class period, plus a couple hours after school of straight dance practice, and then I would go to the gym and run. And all I was eating was a parfait for breakfast, pretzels and maybe a little bit of whatever we made in culinary class that day. And then after working out twice, I would go to my boyfriend's house and eat chips and salsa only to get home at 10 o'clock at curfew, ravenous for real food. I wasn't fueling my body. No wonder my sleep schedule was so poor. I was barely giving myself any fresh whole foods. I was barely eating any fruit and veg. And the only carbs I ate were loaded with fat. Our brain's main source of energy is carbs. I wasn't giving it any whole real food carbs. Not pretzels, not chips things that are super high in fat and salt. I wasn't eating rice very often. And when I did, it was just a small portion. I wasn't eating potatoes very often. And when I did, it was usually mashed potatoes from a box. Now, I'm not saying I blame my parents for not teaching me the right way to eat or raising me on that kind of food. They did what they knew. I grew up in the 2000s. I had access to the internet. I could have done my own research and figured out what I should have been eating. I had a job, I could have bought my own food, but I didn't. It wasn't until I was in college and buying my own food that I really started doing the research. I really started to figure out what food was good for me, and that changed everything. I kept working out in college, but all of a sudden running started to get easier, and I really started to like running. And then I got a bicycle, and I started riding around everywhere, all over the city. What changed and gave me the energy to ride around a hilly city all day long? the foods that I was eating. When I started eating a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet, I felt so much better. And even though I was working out a lot as a kid, I was a gymnast and I was a dancer and I went to the gym and I did all the things, I was still obese. 
for as long as I can remember. When I changed my diet and continued to work out the, the same amount, the weight started falling off. I couldn't believe it. Now, yeah, I still deal with overeating, and that's why I'm not as small as I'd like to be. But I'm working on it, and I'm no longer obese. Now, I know a lot of people hate on high-carb, low-fat diets, especially after everything that has happened in this community, but it's still the diet that works best for me, and I still always feel better when I'm sticking to it. That's not always easy while I'm at work, though, because I work at a really delicious restaurant. But we make bar food. It's not so easy to eat healthy there. While I'm at home, I'm taking this opportunity to stock my house full of fresh food and eat as healthy as I can. I really think doing this has helped me calm down and stop overthinking everything goes wrong. Of course, I've also been limiting my news intake, but since I've not been at work eating some not so healthy things, I feel like my mental state has improved. When I first came home, like I said, I was freaking out quite a bit. And I'm not so much anymore. And the same diet to improve your mood boosts your immune system. Two birds, one stone. I just flipped the tofu, looks like it's almost done. And I have all the veggies prepped and ready to cook on the night that I serve this. So I will check back with y'all when the broth is done so that we can strain it. And then I'll check back with y'all again tomorrow when I actually plate this up and serve it. Thank y'all for hanging out with me today and thank y'all for listening to my little rant. To be honest, it was talking out my thoughts and a little bit of preparation for a meeting I had this weekend. Okay, we're back. It is later in the week and I'm ready to serve this ramen. Last time when I dropped off filming, I didn't show y'all whenever the broth was done. I mixed in a spoonful of miso and then I strained it. And I, I made enough for two nights, so I'm just making half of it tonight. I've got back here a pot of water for my noodles, broth warming up, and a pan ready to wilt my greens. And over here we're gonna get all of our vegetables going. So the first thing I'm gonna do is Get my corn, carrots, and tofu in the oven roasting just for a couple of minutes. It looks like a lot of kale, but it'll wilt down really small. I want it to still have a little bit of bite. And same with my bok choy. And that seems 
being the last thing I need to heat up before we put this bowl together, I'm gonna grab these serving dishes. We tend to like to use these really big bowls for dinner so that there's enough room to like toss our food around or they're really good big Buddha bowls and big salads. At this point, my camera stopped recording while I was putting all the ingredients in the bowl. You'll just have to imagine the broth being poured over the noodles and the veggies. I was trying not to cover up the noodles with so many toppings, but too late for that. You guys know. You were there. You saw. know that these were a thing. I didn't know what ramen bombs were until I went to Ramen Tatsuya, which is one of the best ramen places in Austin. That was what this bowl is based on. It's not the exact same. It's not the exact same ingredients, but some of the ingredients are inspired by their amazing, delicious ramen. And I made little spicy bombs to go with it. healthy ramen made at home that you can feel good about and hopefully it helps boost your mood if only to feel like you're eating some good home comfort food. I don't know about y'all, ramen in this house is a comfort food. I can't wait to dig in. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Thank you for hanging out with me on meal prep day and, and through my choppy little talk as I try to work through it for something going on later this week. Let me know down below how you're doing. If your stores have anything, tell me all the things so we can support each other. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I've been pretty active on Instagram lately. I'm posting lots of healthy food inspiration like this video if you like this recipe if you're gonna try this recipe at home and also send me tag me on Instagram if you do try this recipe I'd love to see your recreations what toppings you use and your take on this recipe share this recipe spread the deliciousness and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you know when I post new videos new recipes all that fun stuff thank y'all so much for watching I'm Naveen Rainbow bye y'all